chapter 5 and verse 39. We'll give praise, glory, and honor to the Most High Yah by way of our Master and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. But, uh, now I just mentioned because I seen a dude that I know, and he know that that man's name is not that, and he still were calling him a higher. And I'm like, this dude who crazy. But one thing I notice is people going to do what they want to do, no matter what you show them, and no matter what you tell them. It was just what the meaning of the name is what stood out to me or what that was in there. And maybe we'll get a chance to check it out this evening. And it says, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of the Most High in you. So come over here to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Like I say, I know... Uh, with Goldie passing, boy, I know that snapped some of y'all into reality real quick. Like, had some of y'all scared, shaking in your boots, trying to figure out what's this and what's that. And after you get this, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 8, get his Isaiah 38 and 1. We're going to look at Ecclesiastes 8 and about verse 5. He said, whoso keep the commandments shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart discern both time and judgment. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment. Therefore the misery of man is great upon him. For he know not that which shall be, for who can tell him when it shall be? So I know you're looking at them. Well, you're saying, well, if he say who keep the commandment, how you doing, Kevin? He say, who, he say whoso... He said, whoever keep the uh, commandment, you can't come in trying to talk like your voice deep. Everybody know your voice ain't deep. But uh, y'all was probably sitting looking at that. Well, if you keep the commandment, you won't feel no evil. But see, I want you to look at son in Revelation chapter 20 and about verse 12. Because you got to sit back and know what, when he talking about if you keep the commandment, you're not going to feel no evil. Because, you know, the book say that, you will say he kill and he make alive. He say, do I not do good and I not do evil? Things can befall you in this life. It don't mean because you were sinning. We'll get looking at it in Job too now. Make sure y'all understand that. He said, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Elohim, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire. Now what's going to be the only thing that gets you put out of the book of life? We shouldn't have to read it, you should already know it. But it get your name blotted out that book. Huh? What you say now? Sin. So obviously you ain't gonna feel you not feeling the evil thing if you keeping the commandment because he say that there's time and judgment, and the misery of, of, of man is great because of this because you don't know when you gonna die. You don't know when this gonna happen. See, look at Isaiah thirty eight and one. Now I want y'all to look at this. Now you looking at King Hezekiah. Listen to what he say. He say, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amu, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith Yahuwah, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. So this man coming in, so I know most of y'all probably would look at that at one time or another and say, well, he must have been wicked then if he was finna die. And listen to what Hezekiah does. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto Yahuwah. Remember now, O Yahuwah, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. So why was Hezekiah sick then? Was he sick because he sinned? So 
So, so we got to look at that then. Well, let's stick back when he made this supplication. Let's see what happened. He said, Then came the word of Yahuwah to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith Yahuwah, the Elohim of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, and I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. And this shall be a sign unto thee from Yahuwah, that Yahuwah will do this thing that he has spoken. Behold, I will bring the shadow of the degrees, which has gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, ten degrees backward. So the sun returned ten degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. The writing of Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, when he had been sick, was recovered of his sickness. Listen what he say now. I said in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said I shall not see Yahuwah, even Yahuwah in the land of the living. I shall behold no more, behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. My age is departed and is removed from me as a shepherd's tent. I have cut off like a weaver my life. He will cut me off with pining sickness from day even to night will thou make an end of me. I reckon till morning that as a lion, so will he break all my bones. From day even to night, will thou make an end of me. What do y'all sit back and you see uh, what come to your mind when you hear about this being hit with a so sickness? And he say he'll make an end of me from day even to night. Say he'll break all my bones as a lion. Say I won't behold no man no more in the inhabitants of the world in the land of the living. My age is departed. Removed from me as a shepherd's tent. I'm cut off like a weave of my life. He'll cut me off with a pine and sickness. Now, why would he sit back and say I'll be cut off with a pine and sickness if he just told him he'd deliver him from it? What y'all think? What you think this could mean? Huh? What y'all think this could mean? Huh? I want to say, I think it's what they said, Job 29. I think a Job 29. It might not be Job 29. Let me see if it's Job 29. Y'all know something that Job said about a sickness? It was Job 29. Huh? I can't hear you. I only got one speaker, so I can't hear you. You got to speak up. No, he said in the book of Job, he said, by reason of my dis disease, I'm sorry, that's what he said, by reason of my disease, which we know means a sickness, he said, my garment has changed. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember? We looked at that before. Y'all remember that? By reason of my disease, my garment has changed. Y'all remember that? Now, he just said, you was hit him with a, with a real life sickness, and it would trouble him from day even to night. What do you think this could mean and what could it be talking about? You think it's just in there for no reason? Somebody talk to me now. Don't everybody talk at once? Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Listen, leave it alone. Leave it alone. I can't hear I can't hear you, Pay. You got to speak up. That he did. Let's let me let me look at it one more time. Let's read it one more time. Look what he said right here in about verse eleven. Well, verse ten. Well, verse 9 said this was the writing that he wrote when he had the sick and was recovered of his sickness. So this is what he wrote when he was sick and he came back from it. He said, in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the greats of the grave. I'm deprived of the residue of my years. In the cutting off of my days, I'm going to the grave. So let's look at John 13, chapter 1 and verse 1. What will you do for a Klondike bar, sir? How much? Sure, it's going to buy me. I mean, that's what the song say. They even sing with it, too. Yeah. yeah. yeah the song says. Yeah. Hey, Dad! Yeah. Dad! Yeah. Dad! Yeah. 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 Nobody say you got to do all that there. Maybe you'll hit a dance for it. Maybe bust a rug. Yeah, don't do that either. It's right there with Job 30 and 18. I was right there the first time. 
He said, by great force of my disease is my garment changed. It bind me about as a collar of my coat. It cast me into the mire and I become like dust and ashes. What happens when you become, what is dust and ashes, everybody? If he say he become like dust and ashes, what does that mean? He did. Because you know what our law say. Our law say from, and we'll get Ecclesiastes chapter 11 to sit back and look at it. This is what I'm sitting here telling you. That's the curse of Adam. All shall die. Please do not think because you're dealing with the word that death just going to skip over you that you are not going to die. John 13 and 1. Now before the feast of Passover, when Yahushua knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Because remember, he said, a wise man know what, right? Time and judgment. And that's what it said in Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Y'all hear me? He said in the supper be and he said in the supper being ended, the devil have now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Yahushua, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand and that he was come from the Most High and went to the Most High, he rise from supper and lay aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. See, when a wise man no time of judgment, you, everybody loves to quote that in Ecclesiastes. You know, it's a time for war. It's a time to it's a time to be born. It's a time to die. You have to realize the moment you came in out through your mama's womb that the clock was started on when you were going to die. That's a great misery. How many of y'all done sat back before you really knew any better? Or you might be doing it right now and you sat back and worried about dying. Thought about it a lot. I know I used to think about it a lot when I was real young. Used to have dreams about it. You know what I'm saying? All the time. All the time. See, I'm sitting here telling you, with Goldie passing, that was a lot of y'all go to think about. A lot of y'all wasn't thinking about no death. You ain't think you could die. That was the last thing on your mind. That's why you didn't mind procrastinating or hypocriting or being complacent or whatever it was you got going on. That didn't bother you. But the minute you seen Goldie was dead or you heard Goldie was dead, you got scared then. You got a reality check, huh? You found out you couldn't sit around playing, huh? Now he said, now let me reread re -re what the man said again because it slipped my mind with him. He said uh, that in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I'm deprived of the residue of my years. You know how old the Lord was when he got killed. He wasn't too old, was it? Got cut short. Come on back to Isaiah 38. Let's look at what he said. Because he said, in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. This man already knew when he was coming. Because stayed instead, a wise man, no time in judgment. See, matter of fact, hold on. Get 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 1. Verse 1. That's how they roll. You know what time it is. Messing with me. See, you know what I do with kids like that? Get another one. Need the second one in the face. <laughs> Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1 He said now I beseech you brethren By the coming of our Lord Yahushua HaMashiach And by our gathering together unto him That you may not That you be not soon shaken in mind Or be troubled Neither by spirit Nor by word Nor by letter as from us That the day of HaMashiach is at hand See that's going at the same thing These dudes be coming with all these false prophecies And all that stuff It be having people scared but you're supposed to know time of judgment. He said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who oppose and exalt himself above all that is called Elohim or that is worship, so that he is Elohim sit in the temple of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. And listen to what he tell you. Remember ye not that when I was with, yet with you, I told you these things. See, when you gonna see a wise man understanding time of judgment, see, he's sitting back giving them a time of when something is going to happen. He say this son of perdition cannot be manifested till a lot of people start falling away from the word. He said, but I told you of these things. 
See, look at Matthew 24. The master tell you the same thing. See, when you know time and judgment, somebody just can't come and tell you anything. But when you ain't a wise person, you're not going to know time and judgment. So therefore, people can get you with a lot of different things. Matthew 24 and 15. He said, a wise man know of time and judgment. He says, when you therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the Kodesh place, whoso read, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee in the mountains. And let him which is on the housetop come not, come not down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Shabbat day. So then shall be great tribulation, such was as not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now, don't you know if he just sat back and told them people when you see the de desolation of abomination that you would know what to do? This is what I was telling y'all about with some people when it, when it come to our people about not wanting to leave to go back to the land, to not ba go back to Jerusalem. They don't want to go there. You know why they don't want to go there? Because they're not going to understand time and judgment. So they're going to sit around. They're not going to know the time. They're not going to judge properly. And when it's time to move, they're going to miss it. A lot of y'all do that, sit back and look at it. There's a time and judgment. There's a time where the Most High is going to execute judgment and get you out of here. See, come on back over here to the book of Job. Let me show y'all what I'm talking about. So y'all also telling you just because something evil happens or what precedes as evil happened to you does not mean that God is against you. Look at Job chapter 1. Look, go get a towel. She thought she was going to get whooped, huh? No, it was Oh, Job 1 and 1, and she crying. Yeah, go get a towel. <laughs> Let's leave it alone. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, one that feared Elohim and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons had, had went and feasted in their houses every one his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about, Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed Elohim in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Yahuwah, and Satan came also among them. And Yahuwah said unto Satan, Whence come thou? Then answered, Then Satan answered Yahuwah and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And Yahuwah said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fear Elohim and eschew evil. Then Satan answered Yahuwah and said, Doth Job fear Elohim for not. See, this is what I was sitting back telling y'all on the next part about the most high can will protect you now. Because look what he tell him. Has thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he have on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance increased in the land. Put forth thy hand now and touch all that he have and he will curse thee to thy face. And Yahuwah said unto Satan, Behold, all that he have is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of Yahuwah. So he ends up touching everything Job had and destroyed it. Did everything Job had get destroyed because Job sinned? But as an average person, if you've seen that and he's supposed to have been serving God and he see he lose everything, then what y'all going to go to thinking? Just being people. Being natural-minded, carnal-minded people, what you going to go to think? He had to do something wrong. Why would the Most High do that to him if he ain't did nothing wrong? Come over here to the second chapter of Job and look at verse 2. Why you just don't stop? And Yahuwah said unto Satan, From whence come thou? And Satan answered Yahuwah, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. 
Yahuwah said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in the earth. A perfect and upright man, one that fear Elohim and eschew evil. And he still hold fast his integrity, although thou move me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered Yahuwah and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man will he give for his life. But put forth thy hand now and touch his bones and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And Yahuwah said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So now he done hit this man and this man got boils and all. And you know what his wife told him? See, look at verse 10. Look at verse 9 and look what his stinking wife told him. Then said his wife unto him, Does thou still retain thy integrity? Curse Elohim and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest one of the foolish women speak. What, shall we receive good at the hand of Elohim? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. See, come back over here and I want you to, what is it, about 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Matter of fact, about chapter 6. Do y'all see a key thing what Job just said to this woman? What did Job just say to this woman? What did he just say to this woman? You sound like a real dummy. <laughs> you sound like a... Exactly. Exactly. That's actually 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and about verse 23. He said exactly. That's what I'm talking about. He said, if I don't got good at his hand, I can't get evil too. See, but y'all looking at, but he so keep the commandment, no evil thing or touching. When he talking about evil, he talking about you actually going to hell. You burning in the lake. Okay, Lee and Lizzie, calm that noise down. Hush it up. Nobody wants to hear. It. Yes, you, Lizzie. Yeah. Sit down. So I want y'all to understand something. Job understood this. You know what I'm saying? I want y'all to understand because I know I was asked that they were like, well, you know, well, if he died, what did he do? Because automatically you thought in your mind he had to do something wrong. You don't have to do nothing wrong for something to happen to you. Because we'll go back and look in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and you'll see the same thing. Boy. A sinner's days can be prolonged. Don't sit back and look at how long. You know how many of y'all done sat back and probably said that because somebody, grandma, y'all knew, lived to be 80 or 100. You know what I'm talking about? And you thinking, shoot, boy, she went to church every week. I know y'all was with her. I know grandma going to make it. She was at every church meeting. Grandma going to bust hell wide open. Because even though her days were prolonged, it wasn't going to be well with her because she didn't obey the Most High. The reason why we come and sit at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, I want you to hear some of the stuff Paul had to say he had to deal with. And he's a servant of the Most High. He's preaching the word. 2 Corinthians 11 and 23. Look what Paul say. Are, are, are they ministers of a mod? Well, 22. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Amashia? I speak as a fool. I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure. Now this man keeping the commandment, and he say he being whooped. In prisons more frequent, and death often. So that means this man say, I was in trouble of my life often. I was locked up frequently. He say of the Yahudim five times received our 40 stripes, save one. Can you imagine being beat for five times with 40 lashes? Five times. He say thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. And night and day I have been in the deep. And journeys often... In perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. And besides those things that are without, which come upon me daily, the care of all the synagogues. That sounds like that's a lot of stuff. So don't. So if we go by the, the logical thinking of most people, 
Does that sound like everything he deal with? That sound like he keeping the command? Does he is he a sinner or is he righteous? What you think? That's a lot of stuff to deal with, ain't it? That's a lot of stuff to deal with. I've been in shipwrecks. I've been to prison. Hey. I've been beaten. I got this man say I'm in peril of robbers, of robbers, of thieves. That's why I be telling y'all, you better pay attention when one of your own ancestors telling you I was in trouble of niggas who robbed. That means I was aware of them. But y'all be around here in La La Land though because you don't think this type of stuff can happen to you. Look at Acts 28. Look at something else happened to Paul. Acts 28 and 1. Don't come in here with all that. Go back in your room. He's saying when they were escaped, they knew that the island was called Melita. Now, this is after they done had a shipwreck. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received every one of us because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer for whom, for whom thou he have escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffer not to live. They sat back and look at if he got out of that. And then he's like, this here, he said he got to be a killer. This how they was thinking. This how some of y'all think when something bad happened to somebody. You think it just like he thought. If that, if that spiker bit in his hand, he said he's got to be a murderer. He got to be. Now, I'm going to ask y'all this question real fast. How many times when y'all see stuff happen to somebody, you think it's because they done did something wrong? And how come sometimes when y'all see something good happen to somebody, you think because they've been doing something right? Then we just read in Psalm 73 what this man say, man said, he say the wicked ain't like other men, right? They get everything they want. Say they ain't never in trouble. That's why I'm telling you, that's why he say a wise man understand time and judgment. You have to understand, man, the most I let some people get certain things, he don't let other people get certain things. Sometimes some stuff is just to test you to see what you're going to do if you're going to obey or not. Because you see the whole key thing, and we finna come back to the book of Job. You see the whole key thing with Job, he say, Satan saying, if you do this, I bet he do this. Go sit down and listen. Then he say, if you touch everything he had, he'll curse him to his face. He said, well, let me put these boils on him. I bet he cursed him then. Let's see what his friend, let's look and see what Job's friends did. Let's see what they mouth said. Job chapter 4 and about verse 1. Let's just see what his friends say. They said he had to commit a sin. He had to do something. They say, why would all this happen to you? Get your Job 8 and 1 to go along with it. You know, this is somebody we know, this is his favorite, this is his favorite thing to look at. They call it being self-righteous. We ain't going to say that's being self-righteous. This is called not understanding judgment. He said, then Aliphaz the Temanite answered and said, if we persuade to continue with thee, will thou be grieved? But who can withhold himself from speaking? But though thou hast instructed many and thou hast strengthened the weak hands, thy words have upholded him that was fallen, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. You heard what he said, we can sway to commend you with thee, will you be grieved? Because they sitting back looking at it is, you're not going to give me no comfort in the time of what I'm going through? Because I think you done did something wrong. Now when you're going through something, you're getting a little weak with it. You know, we done dealt with this chapter before. Look at what he say in verse 5. But now it has come upon thee, and thou faint, it touched thee, and thou art troubled. See, when we didn't read that verse towards the end of that chapter, Leah don't come in here with that. We didn't read it. Paul said, I would rather glory in my infirmities. I would rather glory in my weaknesses. See, this is what the uh, Job friend is sitting here saying, that when, it, when, it, when this stuff come upon you, when you faint because it touched thee and thou art troubled. See, this is what I'm talking about, when, what I was referring to y'all about, that the whole time that... The brother had this ailment of having this liver cancer. You didn't see him faint. You didn't hear him complain. You didn't hear him do any of that. See, it could be certain stuff. Man, some of y'all might not even have nothing happen to your natural body. Y'all could just have simple stuff come up and you're going to complain and you're going to be troubled at the smallest hint of adversity. 
You know, adverse situations end up showing where the metal of a person's character. It shows the way you act. Because some people can't keep on going. Some people get caught up in stuff, man, and they fold up. They fold up. You know, that's really, you know, it's real easy to determine somebody when everything's going good. The real determination that somebody is is what they do when things go wrong. Look at Job 8 and 1. Let's look at the next thing his, home, his other homeboy say to him. He say, then answered Bildad the Shuite and said, how long will thou speak these things? And how long shall the words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? Doth Allahim pervert judgment? Doth the Almighty pervert justice? If thy children sinned against him, and he have cast them away for their transgressions, if thou would seek unto Allahim be times and make thy supplication to the Almighty, if thou were pure and upright, surely now he would awake for thee and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. What do y'all just take to what this man just said to this man? What did Bildad just say to Job? What's the thing he just said to him? And we still holding Isaiah 38. What did he just say to him? That there too. But the key thing he just said to him, he said, if you were pure, when wouldn't the most high fight? This wouldn't be happening to you, wouldn't it? He said, if you wasn't did nothing wrong and you was clean, this would not be happening to you. Now, we will turn around and look at the other part that he just mentioned. He said, if thou children have sinned against thee, he cast them away for their transgressions. If thou would seek unto the most high be times and make thy supplication to the almighty. Then he said, if thou were pure and upright, he would await for thee. He would await for thee. If you, weren't, if you weren't a sinner, he would do this for you. See, but look at what he said about if you would seek and be. Get your Second Chronicles 7 and 14. Then after that, get your Luke chapter 12. Or chapter 11, I should say. Go sit down, Lizzie. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn for their wicked ways, then I will heal for Shamahim and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Get your Luke chapter 11. That's what y'all need to sit back and realize, no matter what you're going through. If you want the man to be with you, you need to start turning your head from one of the stuff that you're doing and get yourself pure. That's why he say seek to and be time so you won't be cast away in your transgressions. Because if you're walking in your transgressions, he's going to cast you away. But the whole point of what we're looking at this evening, because like I said, I was asked this by, by two, three different people. Just because something happened to you does not mean the most high that you necessarily did anything wrong. We also still hold an Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Verse 9 of Luke chapter 11. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receive, and he that seek find, and to him that knock it shall be opened. If any son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give for a fish, give him a serpent? Or if he ask, shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father and the Shamahim give the Ruach HaKodesh to them that ask him? Now, you know, a lot of people look at that, and they just say, Father, give me the spirit, and they think they're just going to get it. But the point of what we're talking about is, is that if you turn to the Most High and seek his face, which is to seek, then sit back and look at Ezra chapter 7, and look what Ezra did. See, this is what it should be coming in your heart. If you're seeking the most high, this is what you should be doing. Let me get around there by Ezra 7 and 7. We'll make it 6. Ezra 7 and 6. This Ezra went up from Babylon, and he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses, which Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharal had given and the king granted him all his requests according to the hand of Yahuwah, his Elohim, upon him. 
And there went up some of the children of Yasharal and of the priests and the Levites and the singers and the porters and the Nethanims unto Jerusalem in the seventh year of Xerxes the king. And he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of the king, for upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon. And on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem according to the good hand of his and according to the good hand of his Elohim upon him. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of Yahuwah and to do it. And to teach in Yasharal statutes and judgments. Do you see the key thing? What did Ezra seek his heart to do? You know what a lot of our people rather seek to do? You know what a lot of our people would rather seek to do? They would much rather, they'd rather teach it first and not keep it. You see the key thing he said? He said to seek the statutes and do them and to teach. You know what I'm saying? Most of these dudes would rather do the opposite. they will rather teach and not keep. See, if you want to do anything to, 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 to please unto you who are, regardless of what, regardless of what happens to your natural body, it's about the saving of your soul. You fearful of losing your natural body because you know you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. That's why it automatically click in your brain. And this is not about the specifically about the individual who passed. You know what I'm talking about? It's about your thinking process. You thinking if he died, he had to do something wrong to die. Because if we doing something right, we cannot die. I ain't never told you you couldn't die. I ever told y'all y'all couldn't die. I'm talking about the, I'm talking about a natural death, your physical body perishing. I ain't never told you you couldn't die. If you obey y'all's word and receive this man's spirit, you won't die the second death. You'll never taste death. Remember that's what the master said? See, look at Matthew 16, 27. See, a lot of brothers read this right here and they think the Lord telling you that ain't nobody going to die. But you got to know what he's talking about. She got to help my find her track. She sure like to run in a circle like she on one. Look at what he say. For the son of man shall come in the esteem of his father with his malachim, and he shall reward every man according to his works. Truly I say unto you, there be some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. So you think this meaning that these people never going to die? So when, he, so when he say they'll never taste death, what you think he talking about? What you think? You, you, what you think this man said when he said these people will never taste death? Yeah. Well, they they not gonna burn. Right. See, the death you trying to avoid is the second death. Let's go look at Genesis chapter three. I mentioned Ecclesiastes eleven too. You got to know you are going to die. You got to know your own law now. Genesis three and seventeen. It says, and unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife and have eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And sweat in the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it thou wast taken, for dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. Get your Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Well, chapter 12, actually. Now, that's what the law say. So when he told them men they'll never taste death, you know full well that couldn't have been what he was talking about, your physical death. Remember what we looked at the other day, man. He said a Mashiach was put to death in the flesh but quickened, but made alive in the spirit. You seeking to be made alive in the spirit. Therefore, you will not feel a natural death. That's why I told you the book always refers to death as what? What does the word, word refer to the state of death as? 
a state of sleep. Don't you notice when they say with the kings, they'll do what? You'll go rest with your fathers, right? You'll go rest with your fathers. You'll go rest with your fathers. He went to sleep with his fathers. He went to sleep with his fathers. Death is not anything to fear. That is a natural course of living. Pretty much every man that's living, that's going to that's gonna touch. That's why Paul says the dead and the Mashiach arise first. He didn't even say those that are dead, did he? He said those that sleep will not prevent those that are awake. He didn't even use the terminology of dead or any of that. You understand what I'm telling you? That's what y'all have to, turn to begin to turn to look at death as. It is a state of sleep. The, 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 the determining factor is, is when you wake up, where will you find yourself at? Just like I was telling y'all on Yom Torah, on trumpets, because Lil Muffet just seen the same thing we were just talking about on that death. Seen it again. When I told you about the trumpet and the ram's horn, and that a trumpet gives off a distinct sound than a ram's horn. You know what I'm saying? They sound completely different. Matter of fact, a trumpet is louder than a ram's horn. You know what I'm saying? So if you around here blowing shofars and ram's horn, that means when it's actually time to get up for the gathering of the assembly unto the door to meet that man in the sky, you're not going to get up because you're going to be listening for the wrong thing. You know what I'm saying? You were going to miss the call. That would be the same way you listening for the ice cream man and a, a, a particular sound, and there was one that came by that had a sound similar but not the same, and you jumped up after that one to go after that one. Then when you called it, you found out it was the wrong one, and by the time you got back for the right one, it was already gone. You know what I'm saying? You missed it. You have to turn around and look at, man, dying is nothing. It's the state of how you're going to be found when you get up. That's why you so nervous and you were so scared. You know what I'm talking about? Because you know if you was to die right now, you're not getting up. And you know the reason why you wasn't getting up? Because you were playing around too much. You know what I'm saying? You were talking a good one. You were saying a good one. You was pretending a good one, and you felt like because we gather up every Shabbat and every feast day, and you sit down and you hear the word and you watch a video or two, you know what I'm saying, or, or you talk to me about certain stuff, that that meant you could never die. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't never told you you could never die. Not a natural death. I ain't never told you that. I told you the objective is to not die that spiritual death, that second death. I told you you ain't got to die from that, but that determination, determining factor for that to happen is on you, on your belief, and on your obedience. That's in your lap. I don't know why y'all think y'all can't hit no grave. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why you think that can't happen to you. Now, when I remember when I used to first, a couple of times I had to mention for y'all talking about maybe to take somebody to get put out for you to get your attention. I surely wasn't thinking about the brother who joined with us who just passed, but I see right now the Lord worked it out. I bet he got your attention now. Huh? What y'all think? What y'all saying? I bet he got y'all attention now, don't don't You know what I'm saying? But how long will he hold your attention though? How long will he hold it? When you be feeling like this, how long you gonna feel like this? How long you gonna be aware of if I if I go to sleep when I wake up, I'm not it's not gonna be good for me. How long that's gonna stick in your heart? Or as time go by, it's gonna fall out your brain. Cause I know for some of y'all, this not gonna stay in your heart too long. I know it ain't. You know what I'm saying? You gonna you got the initial shot, oh he dead. Oh, man, that could have been me. For some of y'all, that thing going to be out your heart by the end of Tabernacles. Some of y'all by the end of the week. A few of y'all, it'll rest with you for a little while. Might rest a little longer, maybe a month and a half. Maybe two. I ain't talking about the thought process of him dying. I'm talking about the thought process of being diligent in, your, in the saving of your soul. Cognizant of your behavior. Uh, diligent in your uh, application being consistent actually considering that any day could be my last on this earth you know what I'm saying and am I prepared to meet my maker 
are my works acceptable before his eyesight? You know what I'm saying? We know that uh, the brother was working towards, and quite diligently, if I say so myself, uh, of getting his works acceptable before you, who or before he left here. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Because it was resonating in his mind in just a short nine month period. Some of y'all done had way longer than nine months. That stuff didn't resonate in your mind. I pray to y'all this be the thing, make it stick. You know what I'm saying? Snap you back into reality. Cause my little sister know. I ain't never been thought like, boy, I can live to see tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? I remember that time when I had that that uh food poisoning. How I'll be feeling sometimes, how we're feeling just then, and he'd be like, he over exaggerating. I'd be like, boy, it could be, a, I could die from this. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah, some people have died from food poisoning because it's been done led to something else. You know what I'm saying? I could die from this. Man, you can have something, man, be throwing up, man, and, and drown in your own vomit. You know what I'm saying? There's people who just threw up, but it came up wrong, and they choked on their own vomit. Some of y'all done drunk, some, drunk a beverage, and it went down the wrong hole, and you felt like you were about to choke to death. Like you were literally drowning. You know what I'm talking about? It don't take a little situation like that. Like, you could have really died. But we don't look at stuff like that. It's been time when you've been riding in traffic, and people just do something stupid. They could have like, boy, you could have been in a real life accident. It's been some accidents where you see cars on the road or on the news and, and you'll be like this here, man, like you wouldn't even think that was a serious enough accident for somebody to die, but somebody died in that. You'll look at the car and be like, somebody died in that? I told y'all a while back, I know Pasha was on the phone and Kip was on the phone when I was standing out there talking to them about the word, man, Quad was on there too. And I watched that man get hit on that motorcycle and die right there in the middle of that street. Dead body laying in the street. Dude, jump, people jumping out cars to try to resuscitate him and comfort him and all this. And I'm looking like, buddy, it's gone. Just how he was laying in the road like this here. I already knew he was dead. By the time I seen it on the news, I didn't even need to see it on the news because I'm looking at his body like, buddy, is dead. They can call the ambulance around here for him, but buddy is dead. You know what I'm saying? All I'd be like is, y'all will he spam, but uh, how he looking? I seen him when he got hit. No, I ain't talking about somebody I came up later. You know what I'm saying? I was at the laundromat standing right there, watched it. Bah! Over with. Just that fam. Gone. When he was coming to hit that intersection, he didn't know that was going to be the end of you today, buddy. He didn't know that. Yay! See, the difference is with gold is, he knew he was finna get ready to go. You know what I'm saying? He knew his time was coming. He understood time and judgment. My time is up. See, when you have a chronic disease or illness, you know what I'm saying? You might can get a little gauge, you know what I'm saying? That you know what? It's, it's about over with. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no chronic disease, man. You don't know. But let's look at it, uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and about verse 5. Your children is going ham. And it says, and when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail because man go to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets, or the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel be broken at the cistern. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the ruach shall return unto Elohim who gave it. You going back to that dust. You going back to that dust. You going back to that dust. No matter what you thinking, you going back. Lizzie. You going back. And when you going back, is you going to be ready when it's time to get up? Is you going to be ready when it's time to get up? That's what I want y'all to sit back and look at. That's what I want you to sit back and look at. 
Come on back over here to uh Come on back and look at that. To this Isaiah 38. We'll get James chapter 5 in a minute. I know this is a hard pill because I know a lot of y'all ain't had nobody you know died. Let's look. We start that about verse 9, verse 10. He said, and we're in verse 11 now. He said he deprived of his residue of his years. He went to the gates of the grave. He said, I said, I shall not see you who even you who in the land of the hit living. I shall behold no man, man no more with the inhabitants of the world. My age is departed and has removed from me as a shepherd's tent. I have cut, I have cut off like a weaver of my life. He will cut me off with pining sickness from day even to night will I make an end of me. I reckon till morning that as a lion so will he break all my bones from day even to night will I make an end of me. Like a crane or a swallow so did I chatter. I did mourn as a dove. My eyes shall fall with looking upward. O Yahuwah, I am, op I am oppressed. Undertake for me. What did this sound like to y'all? Y'all hush. What does this sound like to y'all? How so does it sound like it? Mm-hmm. Let's look at Matthew. Let's look at what he prayed. Let's look at Matthew 26. Let's look at what he prayed. He said, undertake for me. I'm oppressed. I'm sick. He said, they got a sickness. He said, this is what the body prayed for, for this sickness. Then he recovered. Then we can look at John 17 and you'll see the same thing. Because this is what it said about Hezekiah in this instance. It said right here in verse 9, this was the prayer that the king, when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness, this is what he said. So when we look at Matthew 26 and we look at 35, Verse 35, it said, Peter will make it 36. Then come Yahushua with them unto a place called Jessamine, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Does this not sound like this man is doing the same thing that uh, Hezekiah did, that he was sick unto death? He making supplication that maybe I could be healed from my disease. See, look at you, John 17 and 1, or where he's sitting here praying to be healed from his disease. Calm down, Elizabeth. John 17 and 1. These words spake Yahushua and lift up his eyes to Shamahim. Father, the hour was come, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. And as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true Elohim, and Yahushua HaMashiach, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gave me to do. You heard what he said? He finished the work he gave him to do, right? This is the next thing he said. Oh, now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world war. So now he's sitting back looking at son, and this is the reason why I mentioned that a shy or shy or high. Because it means I am that I am. Or, let me rephrase it. I don't want to say it wrong. But it also means this. Pardon me one second. Give me one moment, please. Let me flip my page back. But it also means this. Or I will be that which I now am. Now, why do y'all think this mean? What that meaning? I will be that which I now am. What do y'all think that could mean? I will be that which I now am. Why would why would why would why would y'all tell Moses that his name means I will be that which I now am?
Indeed. But then look at the key thing. I Because if you say I will be, that's present tense, isn't it? Or future tense. You know what I'm saying? That's the same way like when, when my sister said something to me about what I put up there, how I worded it, it was kind of like I'm really talking to myself or talking to others. You know what I'm talking about? Well, at least in my mind, but the words I used were present tense. You know what I'm talking about? So it's as if you're speaking to the person. You know what I'm saying? That's why, like, you know what didn't type? The way that I would have spoken. You had to put those words in past tense. You know what I'm talking about? So when you sit back and you look at, I will be that which I now am, this is future tense. Because you say, I will go to the store. That means in the future, I will be going to the store. This has not occurred. You understand what I'm telling you? So, again, why do you think this, this is important? I'm trying to tie a whole bunch of stuff in in a short period of time. I got somebody upset with me right now. Because these niggas around here, because, you know, we didn't already talk about this in time past. I talked to y'all about it later. But uh, what do you think this could mean? Because this is tying into what we just read. He said, give me the glory that I had with you before the world was. He's praying to be recovered from a sickness. You got to remember something. We just looked at some of this stuff on trumpets. You know what I'm talking about? On the Shabbat that came before trumpets. That Amashiach didn't do nothing wrong. He took something on for man. He didn't do nothing wrong. He was slain from what? The foundation of the world. So he crying out to get a seat. Come over here to 1 Corinthians 15. Then get your Romans chapter 5. We'll start with Romans 5 first because I got that first. Romans 5 and about verse, 13, verse 12. See, the sickness that we, you're looking to avoid that second death. A natural death means nothing. You remember, Apostle Paul told you in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says some of the brothers have, he say, uh, who've seen a Mashiach resurrect from the dead, he says some of them had done fallen asleep. So because they had fallen asleep, had they sinned? Were they evil? Or was it just their time? He said, well, and you can get you 2 Timothy chapter 4, if I'm not mistaken, because it come a time when they ring the bell, man, the fight's over. He said, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So death is going to touch everybody. It's going to touch everybody. You're not getting around that. For until the law was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of Elohim and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahushua HaMashiach, have abound unto many. And not as if it was by one that sinned, so was the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Now we know Adam was always made to die. But because of this one man committing a transgression, this death or this sickness is coming on all people. So you got a Mashiach in one place praying that he could be recovered from this sickness. And as we already know from Hebrew chapter 5, he was heard and that he feared. Because look at it, come on, get your Hebrew 5 and 7 before we get to 1 Corinthians 15. I want to make sure and double check, because I think it said Hezekiah was up here crying and all. That would have said, I heard thy prayer, I seen thy tears while he was weeping then, wasn't it? Well, let's see what Hebrew 5 and 7 say. See if it sounds familiar to you. And y'all got to sit back and look at something. Let's just say you did get a disease. Let's just say you did get sick. And you prayed for the most high to heal you. And he didn't do it. Would you stop serving him because of it? Do you feel like he got to do it because he you, you prayed for it? And I'll tell you this here at the same time, man. You know, uh, he, he, now I put it to you this way because I want to make sure I word it properly so nobody run and say nothing crazy or say nothing dumb. Now you know that these people have what they call medicine. You know what I'm saying? And they have what they call doctors. When you go deal with them, be wise in your decision making. But don't be so caught up and be so dumb that you don't sit back and allow yourself to be able to be healed by these people. If you want to take natural routes, 
I ain't got no problem with it. That's cool. That's great. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the case may be. Because I remember I told you a while back, you know, dudes be like, don't go to doctors because pharmacy mean witchcraft. You know what I'm saying? Don't get caught up in none of that stuff. If you don't research their medication or they, uh things that they do and you're not comfortable with doing that, you know what I'm talking about? Then that's totally different. You know what I'm saying? Like I know a lot of people don't research chemotherapy and they like, you know what? I don't want to do that. I want to take another avenue. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to do I don't want to do radiation. You know what I'm saying? I researched this medication, which I know all y'all done seen commercials where they be selling pills, and it sounds like the pill got more side effects than the disease that it's supposed to be curing you from. But we know that the pharmaceutical industry and the medical industry is not in the business of curing. They're in the business of medicating. You know what I'm talking about? To allow you to live longer with the ailment. Because you know what happens when you live longer with the ailment? They make more money. You know what I'm saying? The more pills you buy, the more money we make. The more doctor visits you have, the more money we make. We can get you to use this fancy equipment in here. We can tax this hospital. Because I can't recall, don't quote me on it, I done heard people say it costs tens of thousands of dollars to get in the x-ray machine. You know what I'm saying? And I bet them people be kicking and screaming to get you to take one. Don't even need one, because you know what? If you got some man of insurance, they can write it off on the insurance, and then people got to pay them. That's why they hate you at them hospitals when you walk in there and you be like, you ain't got no insurance. They take you straight to Shane's. You get on, you call the emergency room and say you close to the memorial, because if, if it's possible, if it's not life-threatening, they taking you across that wall. If you're not finna die right then, if you got, let's say you something happened to you and you was right there on the corner of Beecher University and Memorial Hospital right there, if it's not life threatening, they gonna put you in that in that back of that ambulance, and they gonna ride you right across that bridge to Shands. You know what I'm saying? They gonna take you straight to Shands. You got some insurance? They'll run you right over there to Memorial. The only way you go. Oh yeah, the ride in the ambulance is expensive too. You know what I'm saying? Woo woo! That sun right there. See y'all. A lot of people don't be knowing that boy. I'm talking about, it's a lot of hospitals in Jacksonville don't have no insurance. They don't care where you at. Get that nigga to Shane's. They don't even call it Shane's. Get him to UF Health. Get him to Shane's, UF Health. Get him there fast. Only way they'll put you in that hospital, you got to take a bullet wound. You got to be critical condition. Because then they got to take you there. So that just sit back and go to show you. If you got a little change, you get a... Then on top of that, if depending on who you are, how much money you got, that determines your level of medical care too. Because don't you notice how you see all these white folks bouncing bikes talking about they recovering from cancer? You know what I'm saying? They, most of them got a little bit of change to know somebody. They say, how you bounce back like this here, man? Like you ain't, come on, man. Well, I don't believe Magic Johnson ever had AIDS. HIV, I don't believe nigga ever had it. That's my, you, don't, you don't care HIV and get fat. I ain't never seen it happen. You know what I'm saying? Like he ain't even ain't nothing ever occurred to this man like, like you got something. You know what I'm talking about? You ain't fell off. We ain't heard nothing about no sickness. You know what I'm saying? Easy, he go to the hospital for pneumonia and die full blown AIDS a week later. This is Magic Johnson been walking around with HIV for 23 years. How many people y'all have never heard of or know that's walked around with HIV for 23 years? I don't know nobody. I don't know nobody. You don't, I ain't saying it ain't possible. You don't talk about I don't know nobody. I ain't never heard of it. But I'm just telling y'all this here, man, because I don't want y'all to be like how some of them real uh, Sunday church people be. I ain't going to the hospital. I ain't taking no medication because God going to heal me. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's some white folks. They done got locked up. The one white family, this was in Minnesota. I wasn't mad at him. I think their child had cancer, and they didn't want him to do chemotherapy. And the state said, if you don't take the chemotherapy, we were going to lock you up. So they, kid, they had to kidnap their own child and go on the run with their own child because they didn't want him to have chemotherapy. Well, you know, they believe that's the, you know, if it's the child and, they, and, and somebody come up and say, well, the child got this. Well, basically come up is the hospital going to report you. You know what I'm saying? 
Because they, they don't like you putting the child welfare in there. But don't you think that should be your decision on, on that right there? You know, I've been sitting here telling you, man, no matter what type of medicine you take it, man, just be aware of it. Or what it is. Like, I didn't really have a desire to take them high blood pressure pills. You know what I'm saying? When I was in prison, my mom was like, just go ahead and take it. One was a water pill, so that wasn't that big of a deal. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't really want to, I didn't want to take none of that stuff. Because I don't trust these people. I don't even really know what you're giving me. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know what this is. I had to take your word for it. I don't even know how this could affect me or make me feel. I don't even know if I really want this. And see, in prison, you asking questions on what's in here. That's like talking to the wall, asking for an answer. You wasting your time. Because I guarantee you don't nobody in that facility know what's in what. And probably going to threaten you with some type of physical harm or confinement for even asking. But what I'm just telling you is, is no matter what physical ill, don't be just no dummy and just be like, well, God going to heal me. So I ain't going to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Just be wise in whatever it is you choose to do. Hebrew 5 and 7. He say, who in the days of his flesh, when he offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard and that he feared. Don't you realize that's the same thing happened with Hezekiah? He was heard and that he feared and that he had some strong crying and he prayed unto him who was able to save him from death. Now, when we turn around looking at something now, when a Mashiach finna get ready to go to his grave, he wasn't praying to be saved from a regular death. He was praying to be saved from death as forth as resurrected and getting up. This is what the death you need to be seeking to avoid. Because he told you if evil be done. So if you living in a city and an earthquake happened, you know what I'm talking about? See, I ain't going to go into it in depth this evening. Because I've been holding it for a couple weeks. But in that same chapter of Ecclesiastes, he said there's a vanity that happened to a just man. And there's a vanity that happened to a, 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 a just man according to the work of the wicked. And there's a vanity that happened to a wicked man according to the work of the righteous. You know what I'm saying? The wicked can get something go upside their head from the righteous man, and a just man can get something go what happen to them according to a wicked man. That don't make that just man wicked, and it don't make that wicked man righteous. Look at verse 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. I just want y'all to understand and realize, son, that the whole key thing you're supposed to be seeking is to get your soul saved at the end. You understand what I'm saying? Because you're going to die. See, look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, what I mentioned, what Paul said. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Second Timothy four and six. Second Timothy four and six. It says, "For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand." Because this was a wise man who understood time and judgment. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the the master, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Now, if he's sitting here telling you he finna get ready to die, how is he going to see his appearing then? Because as we already mentioned, those that are asleep will not prevent those that are awake. But you heard what he said? He said, I finished the course. I fought the good fight. I fought the good fight. Well, what is the good fight? 2 Corinthians 9. Well, 1 Corinthians 9, my apologies. 9 and 22. I know some of y'all, I was talking to some of y'all about this here, man, and you was like, man, all the time I wasted. Well, 9 and 24. All the time I wasted and I should have been right and it's taking too long to get right. The only reason why it took you... You felt like it's taking you longer to get where you wanted to be because you weren't serious about getting where you wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? Because if you was, you would have been there. 
If you was, you would have been there. You wouldn't have felt like you had time to still be lusting or scheming or you know what I'm talking about? Or dozing or whatever it is you niggas be doing. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all know what y'all be doing. You wouldn't have felt that way. But thank, but praise be to God, it took somebody dying for you to realize, woo woo, I could have been a lot further along. I know this man death was like taking a big old, you like to drink coffee. You like to drink coffee? I don't either. You know what I'm talking about? What's something that you'll drink to wake you up? What you like to drink to wake you up? I don't drink nothing myself. Yeah, I do as well. But for those of y'all that like something <laughs> uh, strong to drink, you know, the only thing I use is coffee, but I don't know if everybody drink it. But you know what I'm saying? But this man dying was like a big old glass of joe early in the morning. You know what I'm talking about? Woke you up real fast. Say you were groggy, you drunk that coffee, now you alert. But what's going to happen? Like I told you, though, some of y'all, when that caffeine crash, you ain't going to be alert no more. 1 Corinthians 9 and 24. He say, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receive a prize. So run that you may obtain. Because remember what he said, I finished my course. And every man that strive for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they that do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. So fight, I, not as one that beat the air. So he said, I ain't, because you know, now I ain't going to say shadow boxing. Unless you, but even still, if you ride past and you see somebody shadow boxing, you're going to think he's crazy for a little bit. You're like, Lord, call a shadow box. But if you came back around there and you pulled back around there and you left by 15 minutes and you came back and called, was still out there doing that, that nigga is crazy. What's wrong with it? But you see what Paul said? He said, I'm not as one that fight and beat the air. So who is he fighting? He fighting himself. You know what I'm saying? Because in that flesh dwells no good thing. See, the reason, like I said, the reason why y'all feel like, well, I, I could, I should have been further along, this, that, then, the other, because when the things came up that you know you needed to fight and resist, you didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? You just went ahead and you let that win. You took that L. See, that's what I'm talking about, because some of y'all think y'all real tough, too. Somebody, you know, probably in your, when you was in the world, ain't nobody going to try me. I'll knock somebody out. I'll do this here. But when your flesh welled up, you didn't want to knock him out. You didn't want to punch her in the face. You know what I'm saying? You wasn't going to drag her. You wasn't going to molly hop him because you didn't want to do that. That was a battle you didn't want to fight because that's just sitting back showing you you either a coward, you know what I'm saying, and you want to pretend to show to be tough, or you just really enjoy what you're doing. Let's see the next thing you say. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means what I preach to others, I myself be a castaway. So what is Paul telling us here? Paul telling us he keeps himself under control. He fights himself. He resists. That's why the master told you, he that take up of his cross, let him follow me. Let him deny himself. You're going to have to fight the flesh and the things that it desires. That way, if something did befall you and you made strong crying and tears as well, uh, uh, in your supplications to the Most High, they might be heard. Because he said, Yahuwah's ears are open unto the righteous and his face is against them that do evil. But don't think because something doesn't go your particular direction, how you desire, that that means he was against you. You know what I'm saying? Your passing could have been for his glory. You know what I'm talking about? I could walk and get hit by a car tomorrow. And that might be something I could be, next time you see me, I could be rolling up in a wheelchair with my leg in a cast, and that might be something that man just do to get your attention. Don't get me wrong, some things can happen to you because you're doing wrong. But just because something happened to you don't mean you were doing wrong. Because if we take that into account, then we take what happened to Amashiach, that happened to him because he was a sinner, if we take this logic, right? If we take this logic, he was a sinner. We can't take that type of logic. Come back to Isaiah 38. I'm going to still deal with the meaning of uh, I will be now what I am. 
I will be what I now am. Now I will try to look at this one thing of what he said. I reckon till the morning from day even to night thou will make an end of me. What do you think this means from morning till night he'll make an end of me? When did they come snatching? They came and snatched him at night, right? And then when they took him to crucify him, what time of day was it? In the morning. They did all this to make an end of him. Now come to Lamentations chapter 3. 3 and It says it is of Yahuwah's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Yahuwah is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. Yahuwah is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seek him. It's a good thing that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of Yahuwah. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke of his youth. He sit alone and keep silence because he have borne it upon him. What do you think that could mean? You got an idea, Jim Bain? Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22. Oh, 22. Oh, yeah. 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 What y'all think that could mean? He said his his because because of Yahuwah's mercies we're not consumed. His compassion don't fail. It's new every morning. His faithfulness is great. It's good that a man should hope and quietly wait for it. It's good for a man that he bear his yoke in his youth. He sit alone and keep silence because he has borne it upon him. We got the king of Yehuda because if you know if it's a king of Yehuda and it's dealing with it specifically, you know it's a similar to the, uh, uh, the, most, uh, the most high son, right? Now why is this important what we're looking at? Because we're going to get rid of one this one right why is this important what we're looking at, gentlemen? Well, let's look at 1 Corinthians 15 then. Or what we were looking for. And after we look at 1 Corinthians 15, we're going to look at John 3 and 14. Fifteen and twenty-two of Corinthians. It said, "For as in Adam all die, even so in Amashiach shall all be made alive." Well, make it me verse twenty-one. My apologies. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Amashiach shall all be made alive. Well, he says of uh, Yahuwah's mercies that we are not consumed, his compassions, they don't fail. He said because in Adam all die, which we already looked in John Romans 5 with the same thing. He said, so since by man came death, then by man got to come the resurrection of the dead. So his compassion don't fail. Because remember Jeremiah 31, he said, I will entice you or allure you with loving kindness. You know what I'm saying? Or compassion. You know, even in the book of Psalms, uh, uh, in Psalms, he says something about uh, he looked upon men and had compassion on them, knowing that they were but dust. So he knows that you are uh, but of the flesh. See, his compassion even didn't fail when he sat back, and you can go look at Hebrew chapter 2 or Hebrew chapter 4, where he states about how it behooved Amashiach to be made like unto his brethren, to be a faithful and merciful high priest, and the thing pertaining to the reconciliation for sins to the Most High. Because that's compassion. Remember, we done looked at all these things like Amashiach went through childbirth, right? 
He know how that feel. So he can have compassion on a woman who's in that situation, right? He done been persecuted. You know what I'm talking about? And wrongfully accused. So he can have compassion on somebody who's in that situation. You know what I'm saying? He done been in prison falsely. Uh, he done been homeless, hungry. Anything that a human experience that a human being can encounter. He has died. You know what I'm talking about? And died and did nothing wrong. So he can be able to have, how else can you have compassion on somebody unless you've experienced it yourself? You know what I'm talking about? See, somebody who ain't never been hungry can't really have that same level of compassion on somebody with somebody who has. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been in your shoes. I understand your pain. That's why if somebody comes and somebody say, well, I understand how you feel. And you look at them, but you can't. See, I could never tell a woman, I understand your pain of pregnancy. No, I do not. You know what I'm talking about? There's no way I could even encapsulate that in my mind, what it feels like. At the same time, there's no way a woman, a black woman, could say she understand what a black man go, in America, go through in America because she's not a man. You know what I'm talking about? That experience is not the same. But a Mashiach could to look at a woman and say, I understand your pain of childbirth because I experienced it. You know what I'm talking about? He can be able to do that. This is how his compassions don't fail. How do they not fail? And they knew every morning because a Mashiach is forever in the Kodesh Tabernacle to make intercession on your behalf. You know what I'm saying? So it never fails. That's why he say till the Shamahim and earth pass. Not one jot or one tittle shall pass from the law because it's new every morning. Like I told the brother, like I said, which all y'all already know. We know the day starts in the evening for only one reason and one reason alone. Because when he said, let there be light, this was a similitude of bringing life out of death. You know what I'm talking about? And we look at the day starting when the sun come up and then the sun goes down and then the sun comes up again and the, and the day starts and we looking at life, death, then life. And we know that's not how it rolled, did it? It started with death and then life was brought out of death that you might actually fear and love your power all your days on this planet. See, now when he say his faithfulness is new every morning, when did the, when did, when the people came to the sepulchre, when did they come? When did they come? Early in the morning. And when they got there early in the morning, what did they find? Nothing but, but a linen uh, napkin put to the side in there. So they see that faithfulness is new every morning. So every time you get up and you see that sunrise, then you know in that sunrise it'll give you another opportunity for you to attain life. You know what I'm talking about? Because you got to sit back and look at this is what this is really what I want y'all brains to be wrapped on when you see the the the, the sun going down. Or oh, it's dark, right? It's it's nighttime out there right now. You sit back and look at that's death right there. You know what I'm saying? And every time that sun come up, that's life right there. So when that sun come up, that means there's another opportunity for you to save yourself. Like I told you, Hebrews chapter 3, and about verse 12, he say, While today is still today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the wilderness. You know what I'm talking about? And that he say that, uh, and that you warn one another, while today is still today, let your heart be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So I tell y'all like this here, man, because sometimes T get upset with me when I be telling this stuff, and I don't tell her this stuff for just to be saying it, but uh, why put off today? Why put off till tomorrow what you could do today? You know what I'm saying? If you know that there's an issue with something, don't sit back and be like, well, I could do it right now, but I'm going to try to wait a week or two. You know what I'm talking about? Or three, four days. Why even do that? Go ahead, handle it right then. Because I'm using this as an example of saying when you put off something until later, it can end up being a bigger problem. You know what I'm talking about? If you just went ahead and handled it. See, if you put off hearing this man's voice today and feel like you got some time, see, your heart can get hard as stone. And when your heart get hard as stone, that means that deceitfulness of sin will come in. And just like we were looking at last week, he'll let you hear what you want to hear. He'll let you see what you want to see so you can do what you want to do so you can get what you want to get, which was death. We seen that with King Ahab. He didn't have a love for the truth. He didn't hear the man's voice. His heart was hardened from sin. He did what he wanted to do. He died. 
Because if we know that the root cause, he that commits sin, the soul that sin, it will die. You know what I'm saying? Adam has already brought death into the world. Hamashiach had defeated it. For you to be able to get past death, you got to believe and obey. But you got to understand the difference. There's a natural death and there's a second death. You know what I'm talking about? Everybody is going to have to see that natural death. Everybody is not going to have to see that second death. Seeing that second death is all on us. The choice and decisions that we make. It's unfortunate it took somebody to die for you to see that. You know what I'm talking about? At the same time, if it would have been y'all's will for this man not, for us to never know him, he's still going to die. You know what I'm saying? It just would have popped up on some of our pages that them brothers were saying, rest in peace to him. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, oh, man, that brother, I remember that brother used to post this, that, there, and the other. And truth be told, to about eight, nine months ago, that pretty much would have just would have been. You know what I'm talking about? Because I was aware of him on my page. I ain't know that man. I ain't never talked to that man. Y'all opened that man's heart because he heard us on a radio show. You know what I'm talking about? And he had heard me plenty of times before. Because I remember he sent me a message two years ago when he heard me on the show. You know what I'm talking about? But guess what? A lot of y'all, I ain't even know you existed on the planet. You know what I'm talking about? Ain't even have no communication with you. And then two years later, at about the same time, he touch him, he touch him after he hear me again to come on around here. That was for y'all. You know what I'm talking about? That's left behind. You sit back and realize this ain't no joke. This ain't no game. You hear about, you know, you dying and all this type of stuff, but it don't really rest with you, though. It don't really rest with you. It rests with you. It wrestled with, like I said, it be wrestling with me anyway. You know what I'm talking about? I was sad. I ain't going to tell you no lie, man. Because I already knew he was going to die. I was sad for about three minutes. Almost shed a tear, too. I ain't trying to be funny, though. Because I don't cry often. You know what I'm talking about? Because the reason being because I already knew. You know what I'm saying? When you already know, it, it's not the same as when it's sudden. You know what I'm talking about? See, I know for a lot of y'all it was sudden, but I already knew. So then I'm sitting back looking at it is it's, it's how to be able to comfort and talk to y'all, because I know that was going to throw a lot of y'all. Because I knew y'all didn't know. As I done reiterated and said to you again, if you would have known he'd been fighting that for that long, it probably wouldn't have hit you like that. You know what I'm saying? Because you would have been like, you know what's shooting. Y'all kept him going for a long time, you know what I'm saying? You know, he ain't got no more pain now, nah, but I like the way he did it. He didn't want y'all to know that. You know what I'm talking about? To get your attention. <laughs> you just looking at it. I just seen him four months ago. Well, three months ago. I wouldn't even know nothing was wrong with him. I was looking forward to seeing him for Tabernacle. I know he was coming. You know what I'm talking about? And just like this here, gone. You know what I'm talking about? So you looking at it, what happened? I don't understand. Why did he die? I'm also flipping on the same pattern up. If a man can take that note down, y'all only knows. Y'all and him alone, other than the man who dead, only knew what type of pain and suffering he was dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. You know what I'm talking about? And if that man did not complain about that, y'all shouldn't complain about nothing. You know what I'm saying? Nothing. Because I don't, because I'm going to tell you this, because my auntie didn't complain neither. You know what I'm talking about? You know, you find people, they get sick, they be complaining, you know what I'm saying, moaning and groaning, and you be like this here, man, shoot, I don't want to take care of this bastard. This nigga crying and complaining, you know they sick, you know they in a bad spot, you know what I'm talking about? But you be like, man, I don't want to hear all this here. You know what type of inner strength that take? To be in that much pain and don't say nothing? And keep on pushing and going. Now, when we looked at his lamentations, right? What do y'all think this mean when he says it's good for a man to quietly hope and wait and bear the, 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 the yoke of his youth? What do you think Jeremiah is talking about? Bear the yoke of your youth. You got that? What you think? We've been talking about it about several times. If he say this man got the better yoke of his youth, 
But let's get this John 3 and 14 first. Come on back to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. All this stuff still talk about time of judgment. Hamashiach knew full well why he was, he was going to die and why he had to die. You know what I'm talking about? And all that. What I was telling y'all when it come to that Ashaya Shah higher, because I ain't got time to, to hit it this evening. I will be now what I am. You know what I'm talking about? All that is is a mashat we're telling you, I will return back to the state that I was in when I started. That's why he said, give me the glory with you that I had before the world war. Dude don't even realize with that name is a testimony of mashat, what it means. I am that I am. I will be what I am now. You know what I'm saying? I was I was Alaheem when I went right now, and I will when I come back, I'll pick that up again. But he had to come bear the yoke of his youth first. See, John 3 and 14 says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For Elohim said not his Son unto the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believe on him is not condemned, but he that believe not is condemned already, because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High. See, that's the compassions that fail not. Because this man, see, get you uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. This is what I was sitting here telling y'all the other day about. This man can't deny himself. He can't do that. 2 Timothy 2 and 11, he can't do that. He said, as a faithful saying, if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. So that's the key thing of what y'all need to be looking for for being dead. We done talked about it many times. You have to die to your flesh, which was going back to what Paul was talking about, which is fighting. You know what I'm saying? Dying to the things that are pleasurable. I could say this. I could do that. I could go here. I could do this. All this type of stuff. But instead, I will die with him that I can live with him. Because if I live with him, then I'm joined to him. And therefore, I will be awake with him. That I actually won't be dead. I'll just be asleep. Because you got some people who are asleep, but they are dead. If you understand what I'm telling you. You got people who are asleep and are dead. You have people alive who are alive, but are dead because the wages of sin is death. If you die in your sins, you're done. If you're walking in your sins, you're done. The objective is to purge yourself from these things. You for lust. Because we talked about that before. Youthful lust is all that stuff with Eve seen, which is going back to the yoke of your youth. When he talking about it's good for a man to take on the yoke of his youth, he talking about a Masha taking on the yoke of Adam because that's his youth. Remember, we talked about that in Job 13 long time ago. You called me to possess the iniquities of my youth. He taking on because that's why we read that Genesis 3 and 17, the curse he put on Adam because that's the yoke of his youth, is it not? That's the beginning of man. Adam's the beginning of man. That's your youth. That's your infancy. That's your beginning. That's your young age. That man had to come and take that on. And he did it quietly. And he hoped in the salvation of Yah. When the people came and spoke to him and said, come down, he didn't say nothing to them people. He sat and quietly did it. And then he did what? He sat alone too, didn't he? Was anybody with him? All his apostles fled. He was in the grave by himself. He said, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we believe not, yet he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. All these things, y'all need to put them in remembrance. You need to be able to suffer with him that you might reign with him. You need to die with him so you can live with him. You need to put these things in remembrance. You need to remember these things. When you remember these things, then death won't have no dominion over you. See, look, look, let me look at Romans chapter 6, what this man Paul told you about death not having no dominion over you. Six and eleven. And we'll come back to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. That's why the man say he that keep the commandment, he won't fit it. No evil will touch him. Ain't no evil going to touch you. 
Death can't have no power over you if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. He say, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto Allahim through Yahushua HaMashiach, our master. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. You got to fight. Neither yield your, ye, ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto Elohim as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto Elohim. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. See, that's why some of y'all were troubled when you seen that he passed. Because sin still got dominion over you. Therefore, death still got dominion over you. So therefore, you fear death, not because you fear going in the grave, because you fear that second death. None of these men in this word, not, most of them did not fear dying. Didn't fear it in the least bit. You know, the prophet Yonah said, uh, those that forsake Yahuwah forsake their own mercy. He said, I hate those that observe lying vanities. You know what I'm saying? Things that are worthless and for nothing. Anything that'll get us separated from Yah is worthless and for nothing. You know what I'm talking about? Anything that 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 you sit back and look at, anything that you got an issue for where you not where you want to be, it can easily be toppled. It's just your desire and how hard you want to topple it. And especially for all those that you know lift weights or work out, you know how that stuff can get. You know what I'm saying? But you know the, also the excitement that you get from uh, hitting a new rep, a heavier weight. You know what I'm saying? That driver who I thought I couldn't get past that, but I got past it. No matter what goal it is that you set for yourself and you attain it, each and every one of y'all are capable of doing and overcoming with any issue that you may have that's hindering you from being where you desire to be. The, the answer to the question is how hard are you willing to work to get past it? You know what I'm saying? What you willing to do to eliminate that problem? Because the only problem is, is with yourself. The issue is within you. It's not the nothing external. External is internal. You know what I'm saying? So you have to sit back and look at how long you're going to remain that way. How long will you think that way? What is that noise? Oh, I'm just hearing something. Oh, that's them. Oh, okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. I thought I would trip. I just want y'all to read verse 11. He said, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the hearts of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. And though a sinner do an evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know it shall be well with them that fear Elohim with fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked Neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feared not before Elohim. Now you sit back and look at him. He's talking about prolonging his days. Not only is he talking about your time you're going to be on this earth, but eternal life. Because you heard what he said. Though he do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, it ain't going to be well with him. See, get your James chapter 5. I told you, man, David Rockefeller about a hundred years old. You think because he's been alive this long, it's going to be well with him. He said that wicked man life ain't but a shadow. I didn't want you to hear what I mentioned it to you earlier. I didn't want you to hear it again, man. Y'all really got to understand this here right here in James chapter 4 and about verse 13. Go to now ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you not know what shall be on tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appear for a little time and vanish away. You ain't got a whole bunch of time to do what you got to do because you don't know how much time you have. You know what I'm saying? You don't know how much time you have. But that being said, praise y'all for Yahushua HaMashiach and the word. We're going to stop right there. Y'all will. We'll pick it up.